Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. Special coverage on Edelia expected to become a major hurricane over the next 24 to 36 hours. We're going to watch this storm go into an environment that's very conducive for development over the next 20 to 35 hours here. You can see as it moves into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, likely to become a Category 3. It is possible that this thing could actually shoot overshoot intensity scales here and go on to be a ca uh, low end category four here so that's something we're going to keep an eye on here it also has everything to do with the angle this comes in towards the coast here just one little degree angle difference could make all the difference between up here where the panhandle meets the peninsula or down here into tampa so there's going to be so many factors playing into this as well as how quickly this thing intensifies we're also looking at franklin out here a major category four hurricane We'll see what that effect is on Bermuda. Let's get into it. All right, so starting off with the European model here, you can see our system literally is going to be barreling towards the north as we head on into early Tuesday morning and Tuesday afternoon. You can see rapidly strengthening to a Category 2 hurricane by about 2 p.m. on Tuesday. Now, as you can see, this system, let's take a bird's eye view of this system. As you can see, the east side, of course, is always the worst side with this system these uh, tropical hurricanes and as you can see this becoming a category three with 120 mile per hour winds by 2 a.m on the 30th so this thing's going to really start to accelerate as it heads towards the coast there's the eastern eye wall that is going to be the crucial point here as we spin towards 8 a.m so we're looking at very early morning rainfall uh coming into the northern part and central part of florida here and then that's going to kind of progress with extreme amount of winds here and we're gonna to have to watch this because look how big this center of circulation is so it's going to pile the water up even further south here down towards the coastline here so you're going to see at actually rapid water rises here and storm surge rises as well so as this thing comes in it's a very big system it's going to pile the water up in tampa bay that is a very big concern here because it's actually going to help funnel the water here from the south and southwest direction now one thing that's going to happen with this storm too is it tracks into the eastern gulf tuesday and early wednesday is there's going to be very little wind shear and no dry air sea surface temperatures are running extremely warm like bath water so this is going to continue to head inland as we head through out Wednesday afternoon. Look at this towards Jacksonville around 5 p.m. It's actually going to hold its own inland 90 miles per hour up here. So this is going to remain a strong hurricane well inland. Tremendous amount of wind damage expected and that's going to barrel towards between Savannah and Charleston. I do agree with the European model here keeping this out over the open water as it moves off of the Georgia and Florida coastline here. So that should actually help possibly strengthen this back into a hurricane. Guidance is indicating a high-end tropical storm as we head towards August 30th at 2 p.m. Now, one thing to note here, why is this bending towards the east like this? Well, I'll show you on the GFS as well, but we have an area of high pressure that's going to be building towards the east here. And as it does so, it's going to act like a brick wall. It's not going to allow the system to track up the east coast. So that one, that track that was possibly predicted going up the east coast is out of the question now now it could become a bermuda problem as we head towards september 1st you can see there it is the island of bermuda watch this storm as it barrels towards the east it is possible that it actually could head so far south that it actually evades bermuda here as we go in time so as you can see here on the European model, we'll take a look at the bird's eye view. I wanted to show you how much farther to the east on the cone, you know, this is going. So eventually, you know, the eastern eye wall of this storm really starts to make its presence felt. This is why I'm a little bit concerned, you know, if this does end up holding true. There's the eastern eye wall and look at how much up the coast it's going to buzzsaw here. And that's the part that I'm really concerned about here. You really start to see it really starts to wrap up here as it gets more in line with Tampa. And we progress this towards the northeast. You can see, look at that. Yeah, that's a tremendous area of coastline here. There it is, the 30th at 8 a.m. and then 11 a.m. making landfall up there towards or just west or right around Cedar Key. This is a major concern because it's going to buzzsaw areas along the western coast in a very large area. So let's take this as it go comes into the coastline here on the European model, because this is the model I'm most agreeing with here. This just has a much better track record. So right around 5 a.m. on the 30th, you see it's still offshore here. So let's just back this up just a few frames here. We're going to go to 2 a.m. here. Look what starts to happen. 
So you got the center of the storm out here, but the eastern eye wall is going to be pretty close here to Tampa Bay. That's going to start the pushing of the water here towards the southeast. So if you're in these low coastal regions here, even all the way down to Cape Coral, you're going to see some storm surge rises here, and that's concerning, especially since this is going to become a pretty big circulation as it heads up towards the northeast. And the angle that it's coming in as well, look at 5 a.m., and then you go into 8 a.m., it starts to come ashore. But this is very concerning, especially for the Tampa Tampa Bay area, and then heading northward towards Cedar Key. These areas all the way down to Cape Coral, still probably getting some surge by this point, even though you're in tropical storm force conditions. And then as we continue to head throughout the day on Tuesday, look how fast it starts to accelerate inland here, becoming a buzzsaw inland to damaging wind. So yeah, rainfall is becoming more of a thing up here in the Carolinas. Definitely not going to be, you know, still have some flooding here, freshwater flooding in Florida, but it's going to be mainly the storm surges there along the coastline. So comparing that to the GFS, you know, the GFS, I think, for the most part, has been a little bit of a mess when it comes to this. Uh, it is continuing to show the system going west of guidance, which I, I, I kind of disagree with here. And it's continuing to show it with the latest run here, the 18Z, continuing to push it up towards the panhandle, making landfall right around Tallahassee, Perry, Crawfordville, these areas up here towards the panhandle. So I think that's, I'm just thinking that's a bit too far north. You know, we have a trough digging down to the west here, so that's going to help steer it along with the high strengthening uh, hurricane system here to help pivot it a little bit east on the eastern part of this cone, I believe. So, yeah, I think this is a bit too far west and a little bit too far inland here. So if we take a look at the HWRF hurricane model, this has not been the best with this storm either, but nevertheless, we're going to take a look at it because that's what we do. We take a look at all the model solutions. You can see it really intensifying. It is following, it looks like for the most part here, it's following guidance until you get to about 11 p.m. on Tuesday night. Look what starts to happen starts to go way to the west again like the GFS. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just not agreeing with that. I I mean, it could happen, but at this point of the game, it's just, it's more likely to track towards the east, towards Cedar Key, uh, these areas here, and then maybe Brush, Clearwater, Northern Tampa area as well, like the European model is suggesting. All right, so as we take a look here, the NAM 3 kilometer, this thing becomes a buzzsaw. It's actually closer to the European than any of the other models that I could find at this point. You see towards 5 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m. on Wednesday morning landfall. I just think that's just a bit far too north here. There's Cedar Key, Cedar Key here. This is coming up towards Perry. I still think it's too far north. It's possible this could happen, but I think at this point maybe a wobble just to the east is more likely at this point. And a big eye wall, you know, brings this actually up towards, you know, where the peninsula and the panhandle meet. And thanks to National Weather Service as well as National Hurricane Center putting this product out as well. Take a look at here is the peak surge forecast. Take a look at this. So, yeah, this is pretty interesting. This may change as this system wobbles, but you can see up to 12 feet up here across, you know, just north of Tampa. Tampa itself getting upwards here into the orange up to 9 feet. That is big. That is tremendous. And even down here towards uh, Cape Coral, these areas up to 6 feet. That is significant. This goes to show you what a large-scale storm this really is. Thanks to Tropical Tidbits. This is Franklin out here. A perfect buzzsaw. That donut-shaped eye. That's going to continue to strengthen. Category 4 strength. And thanks to Tropical Tidbits for the satellite of Adelia here. Continuing to show massive convection wrapping around the center of the western tip of Cuba here. This system has a lot going for it. Wind shear is going to continue to decrease as well. So if we take a look at dry air analysis and mid layers, thanks to Tropical Tidbits, dry air is not going to be a thing here for Edelia or Franklin. You can see, wow, 961 Franklin, millibars 983 there uh, for Edelia. 977 there on the European model in the morning of the 30th. So this thing, 974. At 9.58 here for Franklin, yeah, plenty of moisture feeding up the U.S. East Coast. Uh, European keeps this a hurricane. 
battering the Carolinas into Thursday and Friday before moving out. There's our Cape Verde system kind of moving out and about here, battling some major dry air. But look at down here, a big surge of moisture here in the intertropical convergence zone. This could give way to that low pressure system right around the 5th through the 7th. This is a system we'll have to keep an eye on. And as you can see, it is like bathwater here into the eastern Gulf. This is why I'm so concerned as Edelia enters this and becomes a massive major hurricane. Look at out here in the MDR. I mean, any of these areas, we're looking at 2 to as much as 5 degrees Celsius above average here. This is insane. This is like bathwater out here, even across the entire Caribbean. And here's the National Hurricane Center, National Oceanic Administration as well. This is the rainfall potential here, 4 to 6 into the yellow. These areas in the 6 to 10, you know, coming right into the panhandle of Florida, parts of Tampa, these areas, yeah, it's looking pretty nasty, even up towards the Carolinas here. This is where we're going to get into the orange, 6 to 10 inches of potential rainfall. Total liquid equivalent precipitation here across the east, you can see, yeah, it's not just Edelia here. That we're going to see the moisture surge here. It's also up into parts of the northeast as we head on into the day, uh, especially uh, parts of the northeast Tuesday into Wednesday here. So watch out for that, about a half to three quarters of an inch. In those purple areas, you could get one to two inches likely very easily here. So watch out for that. Now here it is across the southeast European model putting out pretty close to what? The National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service putting out here as well. Look at this. So yeah. Six to as much as 10 inches of rain in some of these darker orange regions here, especially coastal regions. Uh, red, definitely three to as much as five inches of rain. And as we head into the Caribbean here, look at as Edelia moves away, we're going to settle in for some dry weather the rest of the week through the Cayman Islands and Jamaica until we get to about Friday into Saturday. We'll have some gully washers crop up here, 20 to 40 millimeters, about an inch or an inch and a quarter. And as we continue to go in time, it's uh, looking like a drier week next week. Uh, we will pick up some showers and some thunder showers across the Cayman Islands and Jamaica. Still probably another 40 to 50 millimeters will pile on another inch and a half, close to two inches. And as we get over here towards Puerto Rico, the Lesser Antilles, Hispaniola, is not until about Thursday into Friday and Saturday. All the way from the central and southern Lesser Antilles, we get 40 to 60, 70 millimeters of rain. That's an inch and a half, close to three inches. And Puerto Rico getting in on the act as we get over the weekend as well, probably about 40 to 60 millimeters, anywhere from about an inch and a half, two and a quarter inches likely. As we take a look at Franklin here, a major Category 4 hurricane. Yeah, this system is a buzzsaw. Now take a look at this as it continues to progress into Tuesday into Wednesday here. You can see it heading off to just to the north of Bermuda, which is great news. It is still going to brush Bermuda with tropical storm conditions, but you're probably not going to get those major hurricane conditions that we were seeing before. Now look at, we have another area of potential development out here, 50% chance through day seven out here. That system is going to strengthen. You can see it's going to come off the Cape Verde Islands the next couple days and then re-strengthen and possibly become our next tropical storm and then there's another system that's trying to form out here the first week of september right around september 5th as you can see that's going to continue to barrel towards the west here so depending on how strong this is it might find a weakness in the subtropical ridge here if it remains weaker it might actually head towards the caribbean islands or eventually the u.s east coast so this is something we really need to keep an eye on as we go in time now how about rainfall here across the western caribbean well, as you can see here, as Edelia heads to the north here, it does dry out a bit until we get to about the 31st of August here. You can start to see some heavy rains developing around Jamaica and eventually the Cayman Islands here as we head towards the end of the month. And then lots of rainfall pivots towards the north on September 1st here. So we'll get bouts of rainfall. I'll show you those rainfall amounts that we're expecting during the next 5 to 10 days here across the Caribbean. So we're looking at a big wet period of Heavy rain and tropical moisture you can see funneling towards the north here as we head towards September 5th. All right, so as we head to the Western Pacific, uh, Sayola here, this storm is just hanging around the Philippines here, expected to continue to strengthen. Uh, it's actually, at this point, probably as 
strength as it's going to be. It's possibly at this point not going to become a super typhoon, which is great news. You see how close it's going to become to the island of Taiwan here. So I'm not expecting a landfall here in Taiwan, which is great news here. This system is going to continue to bend towards the west. And the really good news is it's actually going to continue westward here and slowly weaken. The European model taking this way to the north, it's possible that this bends uh, further to the south in time. So it'll become a big rainmaker for sure. The other system we have out here is Tropical Storm ha Haiku here. So Haiku actually going to continue towards the northwest. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. So th this system is going to continue to become a typhoon. And this is the system I was showing you last time here. Take a look at this. This barrels towards the East China coast here, right into the East China Sea. It does, it looks like on the European model, it weakens a bit here and then makes a right turn up here towards the Korean Peninsula. But you can see actually right about... Uh, right around September 2nd here, it's just east of Shanghai. So guidance is kind of pushing this towards Shanghai, whereas the European model misses Shanghai, brushes it with some of that effects there, and then goes up towards the Korean Peninsula. So that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on here. All right, so our HRRR model, this is a good mesoscale model. We're going to take a look and see what this has in store here for our hurricane. Uh, so here's the thing, you know, we're going to see some showers and thunderstorms. Let me just briefly touch here into parts of the northeast. You can see some showers and thunderstorms continuing as we head into the overnight hours uh, towards midnight and 7 a.m. on Tuesday. So the big story continuing to be Idalia here becoming a big hurricane here on Tuesday. Yeah, there it is. So the HRRR still going west of guidance as well. I just don't, I, I don't agree with this. This is, yeah, I mean, this is interesting. Rapidly strengthening hurricane, but it just is too far here to the west. So this essentially, I don't know, this is the, we're going to take a look at the NAM 3 kilometers, see if we can actually, uh, find a model that kind of agrees with the European model here. All right, so here is our HRRR model. You can see all this unsettled weather here across the east all the way up into the northeast there. That's going to continue as we head through the overnight hours of Monday night into Tuesday. So there it is across the northeast. You can see some showers and thunderstorms towards 4 a.m., 5 a.m., maybe a reflare up here towards Interstate 81, parts of West Virginia and Northern Virginia there. But yeah, we're going to continue to see that front move through here across the northeast. There it is, moving through the northeast for Wednesday. So this showers and thunderstorm activity, it's going to be a big thing here across New England, getting quite the downpours. Now let's go towards the south here. You can see here across parts of Florida, yeah, it's going to be kind of interesting here to see this storm unfold. Take a look at this. Yeah, here's the NAM 3 kilometer. Once again, it's west of guidance, but it's not as far west as some of the other models. So this is a bit more maybe in the direction here of the European model. But yeah, that's remaining a pretty strong hurricane even well inland here. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning, digital, professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. As always, thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather. Take a look at my Facebook page at Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern to follow the tropics. And if you want to hop over to my Twitter page, it's at Weather Eastern. It's MediaMark.com. Thanks for joining me question or comment down below subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell notification button so you're alerted when a video comes out